Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to Tuesday Notary Titans for Tuesday, May 2nd, 2023. First Tuesday of a new month. My name is Bill Soroka. I'm the author of Sign and Thrive, How to Make Six Figures as a Mobile Notary and Loan Signing Agent, and founder of the Notary Business Builder, an advanced training community to help you grow your business. I'm here with... Uh, my regular co-host, Laura Bewer, who which will be on here shortly, but we also, for the entire month of May, have a very special guest, uh, Beth Hathout, uh, and I'm going to introduce her in just a moment here, but I love the journey that Beth's been on, and I love that she's included me in uh, that journey, too, because she's an incredible human being and an amazing instructor, uh, an expert in Beth, almost all 50 states now, right? Um, it depends on what day it is. <laughs> <laughs> depends on what day it is. I can appreciate that. But Beth has been such an incredible supporter of mine from the very beginning when I first started teaching my Sign and Thrive course. And she's just grown, developed, and turned around and shined the, lo- the light for the rest of us. So please welcome Beth Hath- Beth Hathwood, instructor for NotaryStars.com. Hey, Beth. Hey, Bill, thank you so much for having me on. I see so many familiar faces here. We kind of share at least a portion of our community between our two groups. I'm so grateful that you would have me on as a guest. I appreciate that. Yeah, Uh, it's really my pleasure. Go ahead. I'm sorry I cut you off. (laughs) No, no, that's okay. I always have a problem with uh, silent spots, right? Okay. (laughs) Anyway, guys, I am Beth Happen. I am currently an instructor with Notary Stars. NotaryStars.com is a training and listing site for notaries. Um, I've been with them three years now. They just celebrated their four-year anniversary. So that was a big celebration for us. Hi, Jasmine. <laughs> um and big celebration for them and for me. I can't imagine three years has passed um, by so quickly. My background was previously in title and escrow. I did that for a few years until I realized that has to be the most stressful job on the planet. Um, quickly kind of moved out of that and into the mobile notary and signing agent business. And I've been doing that for 20, almost 22 years now. So kind of grateful to be moving into an instructor position. It helps me slow down just a little bit. I get to sit in front of a camera and look at all your smiling faces. Well, when you have your cameras on um, most of the time, there you go, Kristen. And um, so that's what I'm doing now. We have a big community at Notary Stars Facebook group as well. We're kind of focused on loan signing agent training, but we do have some um, training for just standard notary uh, etiquette and rules and regulations across all 50 states. So over 150 hours of pre-recorded uh, online video training, and we do live training four days a week. So I'm really, really happy that Bill and Laura would have me on as their guest this month. I'm so excited to be here. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, awesome, Beth. Well, really, the uh, the honor is all ours. I'm glad that you made time for us because the perspective that you bring to this conversation is huge. So this is the opportunity at hand, folks. You've got Laura Viewer. You've got me, you've got Beth Hathit. So the combined math on that is a lot of experience as both a mobile notary and a loan signing agent with three people who have built a sustainable business and scaled their business to all kinds of different levels. So this is what we can talk about today. We don't have to talk, we can talk some of the basics, of course. I know we've got some new notaries in the house, but also this is, could be an advanced conversation how people built a business that lasts, what's the connections, the relationships that have made all the difference, what kind of tools, strategies, technology were utilized to help uh, bolster these careers and these challenges. So that's 
the opportunity you have today. So use the raise hand feature on Zoom. That's the best way to do this. If you don't know where that is, it could depend on your device and the version of Zoom you have. But usually if you move your mouse around my face right now, a little toolbar will open up along the bottom and you'll see a reactions button with a, a smiley face with a plus side on its head. Click that and you'll have a big bar that says raise hand. That's how you raise your hand in Zoom. If you're having a different experience, that's outside my pay grade. So put it in the chat here. And one of these amazing notary superheroes on today's call can help walk you through that. Our aim is to get to all questions today. And I'll keep calling for questions to make sure that we fill the entire hour for that. Uh, thank you, Beth. It looks like Laura's already in. So that's perfect timing. I want to bring Laura up too. Uh, so she can introduce herself. Hey, Laura. Oh, you're uh, you're not on mute, but your microphone is not working. So you might have to, on the microphone button on your screen, the little carrot just to the right of it, if you click that, you got to tell your computer which microphone you want it to use. Hey, okay. that's it. Okay. Excellent. All right. Welcome. Well, thank you very much. Hi, everybody. I'm Laura Bewer uh, from Coach Me Laura. And my mission in life is to help develop confident and competent notaries. And I'm so glad to be with you today. Laura, you want to tell everybody right now while we're just getting started about your uh, Saturday morning inner circle? Yeah, so I have group style uh, free laser coaching, and that happens on Saturdays from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, and I it's coming this Saturday, and it's a smaller group. So if a group this size makes you feel a little intimidated to ask your questions, feel free to come to mine. Uh, go to my website, coachmelaura.com, scroll down a few inches to Laura's Inner Circle and give me your email. I'll send you the link. Hold on to it because I never change it. And you can use that for pretty much any Saturday. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so much, Laura. And thank you for making time out of your busy teaching day today to be here with us. All right. We just kind of went over the opportunity that you have here. Tons of perspective and years of experience on today's call. Let's hear those questions. Gia, thank you so much for your patience. I know you had a question from last week, so I'm so glad that you're here and can share that question with us. How can we help? First, Happy I'm Tuesday. Sorry. Yeah, hi. What state are you in and how can we help? Yes, California. So thank you for having this again. Blessings to you all. Thank you for adding value. My question is, is uh, there a uh, pre-screener of questions for general notary work? For example, when I'm doing uh, POAs, I'm noticing that yeah. signers are coming to, the, to the, the notarization or the quick appointment, which should take me like 10 minutes their POA is not even completed. And so when they come to me, it's like, well, what am I supposed to be doing? What do I put here? And then I explain to them, they need to ask the attorney or you know, refer to an attorney. And then it causes all kinds of confusion. And it's just something that should have been 10 minutes, 15 minutes is taking like 40 minutes. So I just wanna know if there's some pre-screener questions I could say, you know, along with have your ID, make sure the document is filled out, just you know, to kind of move the signing along. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, what a great question. Yeah. I think you've come to the, the right place here. Laura, I know we've got a great response from you on this. I'd like to bounce it to Beth, though, to kick us off to get that perspective. Beth, do you have a series of questions or a suggestion for somebody as they're uh, feeling out for uh, general notary work calls? Well, yes and no. I don't have anything formally written out, but um, typically when I do get a call and they're talking about a power of attorney, there are a few general notary questions that we're going to ask always, right? Do you have current ID? Um, and sometimes on a power of attorney, you're not speaking to the signer. It's going to be maybe a family member that's calling uh, in response to that, trying to get dad to get his um, uh, advanced directive put together or something like that. So we need to know um, if they're in a facility, if they're um, alert and aware, um, if they have current ID, 
what type of power of attorney it is, does it require witnesses? Some of them do. Some of them are either or, right? So we need to have them really kind of look at that document um, and help you see what their requirements are on there. So if they need witnesses, they need to have uh, need to be able to provide those witnesses for you, or you can bring somebody with you. Um, so kind of all of those things, make sure that they can go through and complete the power of attorney, but not sign it until you get there. That's typically what I do, Laura. Beautiful, Laura. Laura yeah. So yeah, the only two things I would add to that is if I'm not speaking to the signer, I do also ask, can they sign their name unassisted? And I ask if they speak my language, just yeah. to make sure, because sometimes that becomes an issue. That's why I have somebody else calling on their behalf. In terms of making sure I get all of these questions the first time, because as you can see, you're, you're having to think through, you know, I need to ask this, this, and this. Um, there is a form that Kim Flanagan developed that is for screening a caller for general notary work. And you can go to notaryallies.com and find that there. And that way it's on paper, you don't forget a question. And it has some other things that you might not think about like, oh, when I come to your house, is, is it gated? Do I need a code to get in, right? There's, is there a parking situation? Am I allowed to not park in certain places when it's one of these, uh, like a uh, mobile home park and you can't park in the street area. So she has all of that covered on those forms. And then I use that as my confirmation as I'm filling it out uh, for my documentation of what I told them and what I'm expecting. Then if I get there and they're not ready and they don't have ID or they're not prepared based on our conversation, that's when they could end up being charged wait time because I, I plan to be there for 10 or 15 minutes because I went through all this stuff. And then if they're like, oh, we didn't go find the ID yet. Oh, we didn't do this, whatever. Now, um, uh, I don't have a problem with charging them for the extra time. And then about the witness, I just want to add that I have go-to notaries that I use as witnesses. It gives them experience to see documents they wouldn't otherwise get to see. They make a little money because I charge the signer for the service of providing witnesses. Uh, and so it's kind of a win-win for everybody. Yeah, excellent. I love that. Thank Great you. perspective. And what I love about this question is that it uh, allows us to talk about how important it can be to systemize your processes. Yeah. Because here's one of the reasons I used to avoid general notary work calls is because I didn't systemize it. So every call was like this who the hell knows what I'm stepping into, right? I don't right. I don't know what questions to ask. It was like left and right. And what if it's this? And what if it's that? So systemizing the flow of that call changed everything for me. And it boosted my confidence too. I knew what questions to ask. So I, I would have a better understanding of the situation. I would know if I could help them or if I couldn't help them. And then also another huge part of this is it might spark you to take, ask them to share the document with you. Is there a way that they can take a picture and send it to you? Can they email it to you? That not only buys you a little bit of time if you need to do some research because you don't fully understand what the situation is, but it also can bring you peace of mind just knowing, okay, I see the document. Yeah, it definitely needs a notarization. I can read the certificate ahead of time and I can tell what kind of notarial act it is on there as well. So this is next level conversation. So Gia, thank you so much for bringing it up. It feels like thank it's you. kind of basic, right? But it's not. This systemization process is what's going to help you be more efficient, take more appointments and demonstrate your expertise. Anything else that you guys would wrap up with on that? And ditto. Can she um, give us the website address again to find that document, please? Oh, yeah. Thank you so much for reminding me. So, yeah. So, Kim Flanagan at notaryallies.com. Uh, and I posted it here in the chat a couple times for you as well. But she's got the intake form that will guide you through the conversation. It is so helpful. And then you can sketch out your own questions or use the back to write your own uh, question or preference or whatever it is mm -hmm. on there. And this was, 
I hear so much positive feedback from this form. It can change everything for you. Just that one little extra step. All right. And then the other question I want to follow up with, Laura, because I know it's on some people's minds because I still uh, hear these in my coaching calls is what do you charge for witnesses? So I typically charge if it's right there in my community, I know they're not going to have to drive more than 10 minutes, $25 for them to pop over for the few minutes to um, witness. And of course, it gives them the opportunity to observe the process that I've got going on, which is a coaching for them that they're not paying for because they're getting paid um, and to get a chance to get a glimpse of another document, perhaps that they've never seen. If they have to drive more than that, say it's like 15 minutes or 20 minutes, then I'll probably raise it to 35. But I don't pay more than that because all they're doing is driving there, taking a look at that, and they're getting the, in addition to the payment, they're getting some training. And I think that is worth a lot more than the money that they're getting. Excellent, thank you. And then uh, Beth, do you have a, a pricing structure for your witnesses? Yeah, it kind of falls between that 25 and $50 range. And it, like Laura, it kind of depends on how far they might be driving yeah. um, and some of those other factors. But it usually lands in that 30, $35 range. Excellent. Thank you very much. And I know uh, I tend to quote on the higher end of the witnesses, uh, especially, well, in, in Phoenix in particular, it was hard to find witnesses that were close. So I charged him at least $50 for that. And I would quote the signer that. And then towards the end last year, before I moved, I was boosting that to $75. I was boosting it to $75 because I really didn't want to coordinate uh, the witnesses. That's an extra step. Uh, so if I was going to have to do that and find somebody, I wanted it to be worth my my connection, my relationship's time to come in there. And that usually prompted the signer to do two things. One, either find their own. Suddenly they have the courage to ask their neighbor or somebody in their office to be the witness. Or they said, that's fine. Just take care of it. So then my witnesses got fair, paid very fairly for popping in there for a few minutes. All right, hope that was helpful. Kanal or KK, thanks so much for being here. Good to see you again. Tell everybody what state you're in and how we can help. Yes, sir. Thank you. I'm in Little Rock, Arkansas. And uh, appreciate uh, the statements about asking the right questions, also screening the call, because last two I did over the weekend, I did that. And sometimes I even ask them to take a picture and send me a text you know, if they're willing, you know, depending on the nature of the document. So it kind of helps me prep. But uh, my question is, I've been getting a couple out of state calls and I wanted to solidify my thought in if anything is wrong or get corrected, which is if the, the call for notarization or I-9 verification is coming from out of state, the document is out of state, but I'm notarizing and the person's in front of me and everything is still the same. I'm verifying who they are. I'm signing their, or they're signing in front of me. Then I'm still okay, right? Because one, one, what happened over the weekend is it was a California document and they were like, uh, they were here in town. They said, can we get it? Because we have to send it back to them over email. I said, yes, you can. But it made me want to bulletproof my thought process and see if I'm missing something because I was like sometimes California has weird rules so <laughs> well all the time California has some real <laughs> weird rules uh yeah that's a great question and I'm gonna let Laura answer this because it has a couple of different levels to it so Laura you want to touch on the i9 and this different scenario so, yeah just in general uh California will accept another state's notarization uh, and um, coming into California, as long as it was executed properly in the state where that notary is commissioned. So that's just in general terms, that should never be a problem. Um, in terms of an I-9 form, we're not allowed in California to do that. We can't even touch it. Um, even though it's not notarized, our secretary of state has said, it's a immigration form. You can't handle that unless you're a bonded immigration specialist. So. Um, I can't touch it. So if they were in their own state, they couldn't get it done by 
a regular notary. They'd have to go to an immigration expert. You can handle them in your state, but I don't know if they'll have, you know, I doubt it, if they have any issue with um, having you do it there in Arkansas. Because usually things can be done out of state, but because we have a restriction on that document, I, I would say, I would ask them, do you want to check before I do this to make sure it's going to be acceptable to whoever's receiving it? Right. Yeah, this sometimes morning. That's, that's what it all, you know, falls down to is, will the receiving agency take it? Correct. Thank you. This morning, the lady who called me from California, Long Beach, the employee was here, so that made it easy. So I just had to go to the employee's home. I worked as an authorized representative, and she sent me an official email saying I was allowed to be that. Uh -huh. And so... Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. then I don't see any issue with this particular time. Yes. Yeah. And KK, the uh, that's the the big takeaway here is that you're operating outside of your capacity as a notary public on that document because it, it the I nine itself is not notarized. Did they uh, did they include a affidavit of some kind or something or a statement that you did have to notarize? No, 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 no. Okay. Sorry. All right. Two separate, yeah. uh, maybe misspoke. No, that was just the I-9, but it was still coming from out of state. And then I had a notarization of a different document over the weekend that they were also from California. And so I was just kind of bulletproofing my California out of state thoughts. Yeah. Appreciate okay. that. Okay. Yeah, no problem. Excellent. Thank you, KK. All right, uh, time for an announcement. Uh, this Saturday, uh, Amy Seitz from CyberIzeIt and Judy Lawrence from Lawrence Institute for Notaries are having a free information session about their upcoming um, Philly Social uh, in Philadelphia on September 29th, that weekend. Uh, and it is the Go to event this year if you want to learn and also hang out with other notaries, peers, influencers of the industry. Check that out uh, for this Saturday. I'll post that link. It's a huge long link on the Eventbrite. Uh, so if you're on the live call, you'll get that. And I'll try to remember <laughs> to include that in the email uh, follow up as well. Sue Wetzel, thanks so much for being here. What state are you in and how can we help? Sue Wetzel, probably looking for that mute button on her phone. We will talk slowly before we go to Emery's iPhone. All right, Sue, I'll leave you up there. Emery, thank you so much for being here. What state are you in and how can we help? Hi, Bill, Laura, and I forgot the other lady's name. I apologize. No uh, problem. That's Beth. I'm from <laughs> Beth. Uh, I actually was on a call with them, a Zoom call. But anyway. Um, I'm from Pennsylvania and I have a question about witnessing. Um, I noticed that I've been getting a lot of sellers packs or whatever, sometimes refinances, and they'll say that I can be one of the witnesses, uh, but I have to have another witness. And I, I guess I don't really mind being the other witness, but I guess my question is, is it preferable to have two different witnesses besides myself? Yeah, I'm going to bring yeah. up both Laura and Beth on this topic. Laura, I'm going to let you go first on this one. So it comes down to two different things. One is what does your state say? Because some states do not address it at all. Uh, and in that case, you could be one of the witnesses, but it's never the best practice it's not recommended that you be one of the witnesses. The recommendation would be, well, can you get two different people? Um, if your state addresses it, then you have to follow your state specific rules about whether or not you would be allowed to be one of those witnesses. Beth, do you wanna pick up from there? Yeah, I was just checking Pennsylvania and I don't see any reference for Pennsylvania where it speaks to the notary as a witness. Yeah. So, yeah. Right. It's, it's not in my state. Pardon me. In my state, I can. I can be a witness and right. um, a notary. Um, um, but to, 
yeah, piggyback off of what Laura was saying, um, best practice is that it's probably never a good idea to be the notary and the witness on the same document. And you can kind of um, parse that out in your mind when you think of why there's a requirement for a witness in the first place. So right, right. You know, another set of eyes, making sure that mm -hmm. Um, someone was signing willingly, not being coerced, that they were identified and they, you know, knew what the document said, blah, blah, blah. So if you're doing that and notarizing it, it kind of waters down that whole process. Okay. One more question really quickly. Sure. I noticed also I've been getting uh, the refinances and a lot of different loan documents. When it comes to the jurat, sometimes they don't have the venue. They would just have, you know, the wording for the jurat, the sworn and sign and sworn, and my signature. Should I add the venue on there? Because sometimes there's not a lot of space. Uh, but I've been kind of doing it. But I just wanted to know, mm -hmm. was it necessary for me to do it on the jurat? Laura, you want to? Jumping yeah, I, I believe that's part of the sufficiency of the certificate to have the venue, and you could just mm -hmm. hand write it in at the top somewhere. You could stack okay. it or you could do it side to side. Yes. Um, that's but I, I believe that's part of one of the requirements for certificates. Mm -hmm. So I yeah. would be putting it in every time. Okay. Just yeah. wanted to make sure I was doing the right thing. Yeah, for whatever reason that happens um, more often on giraffes than it does on any other type yeah. of certificate is probably um, has a venue at the very top of the document, mm -hmm. a affiance statement, and then just the rest of the certificate wording. But yeah, I agree with Laura to be safe, throw in that venue around your certificate verbiage just to play it safe. Yeah, okay. Thank you. All right. Excellent question, Emery. And we do have a some very special announcement right now, too. I'm so excited for my friend, colleague, NBB member, Jennifer Cooper in uh, California. Jennifer has a brand new uh, program that she's releasing uh, this week, actually, just released yesterday. Jen, tell us all about it. Hi. Thank you, Bill. Uh, my name is, can you hear me okay? Sure I'm in can. my car. Okay, good. My name is Jennifer Cooper. I'm a notary and loan signing agent out of Central California. And yesterday I launched my first course. It's for brand new notaries who are just starting their business. This course is not going to teach you how to be a notary. It's going to teach you how to set up a legal business. Now it's kind of specific to California and Oregon, but if you just need somebody to point you in the right direction on how to do this, it's pretty applicable across the country. You will have to do a little bit of your own legwork if you're not in those two states. Um, it is available now for $49.99, but I am giving TNT viewers 25% off um, with a coupon code TNT. And I'm going to put that link in the chat box. Um, the other thing that's live right now is my notary resource page. And this is awesome because it gives you access and discounts to the best training, the best platforms, the best leaders in our industry. Bill Soroka, Laura Buer is among all those people. And that's $10, but you get that free if you join the course. So I'm going to put the link to both of them in the chat box. I'm very, very excited. And thank you for letting me share it with everybody, Bill. Yeah, I thank you so much. I'm so proud of you. I'm so excited for you. And I love all the value that you continue to bring to your community of notaries, which is our community of notaries as well. And uh, that resource uh, page, guys, is packed full of value just I think just in mine alone, you get a you get a free PDF copy of all three of my published books right now. So technically, that would cover the cost of the entire program on that. Plus, there's so many more in there and discount mm -hmm. code. So check that out. And do you? I posted a link to your um, actual website with the TNT code for twenty five percent off. Do you want to tell me which link is best for those I watching the replay? Yeah, um, I actually shortened that link. It's jkcmobilenotary.com backslash shop. And the, and the code is TNT for 25% off. This is a membership. So when you go to pay for it, 
It's gonna ask you to create a, a name and password. What you're gonna get once you pay for it is access to the membership room, which you're gonna have access to all the videos um, for the course. And you will get a free discount coupon to get the resource page for free as well. So if you take the course, otherwise the resource page is $10. You can get both of them on that page at jkcmobilenotary.com backslash shop. Beautiful. And just to clarify, because I already see one question in there too. When you say membership, is it ongoing mm -hmm. or is it $49.99 uh, one-time fee? One-time fee. One-time okay. fee for the resource page, one-time fee for the course. And then you have access to everything that I will even create from this point on that is related to this specific topic, which is starting a brand new legal business for notaries. Yeah, for 50 bucks. You can't beat that. Thank you so yeah. much for lifetime access. Wonderful. Yep. And thank you so Thanks. much. Congratulations. Thanks. Thanks. I love supporting this entire community. In particular, I love supporting our NVB members that are thinking big outside the box and they're innovating, making life easier, shining a light back for the rest of the notary. So thank you for doing that, Jen. Uh, let's move on to our next set of questions. Sue, I see you got your camera on. Let's see if we can, there okay. we go. Hey Hi. Sue, what state are you in and how can we help? I'm in Northern California and Zoom on my phone is complicated sometimes. So here's my question. I, you guys are great. Bill, you do wonderful at facilitating. And so I have been taking the app still classes. I'm building my website out. And my question is what, um, uh, what device or company do I want to use to take, um, online payments or like Square? What do I want to use for credit card payments? Yeah, what a great question. We haven't heard this in a while, Sue. So I'm so glad that you uh, brought it up because so much has changed since we start, first started talking TNT on this. Uh, let's see, Beth, do you have any suggestions from your community, the notaries that you talk to? What are people using to collect payments? Right. Mostly, it's probably the biggest one out there. Um, sitting what on one? It's called Stripe. Mm -hmm. All right, awesome, Beth. Thank you. That's a great. That's who I use. It's really flexible and it plays well with others. Meaning that if you have other systems, you can integrate it very easily. That might not be what you're looking for quite yet, Sue. But question, Beth, do you know, does Stripe have an actual physical device for running credit cards or something that plugs into your phone like some of the others? They do. Yep. They so do. you can do it mobile if you're doing um, general notary work and you're sitting at the table. Um, it, there's a card swipe that attaches to your phone. Yep. Beautiful. Laura, what do you suggest or what have you heard being used? Um, I use multiple ones. I use Stripe for all of my uh, website types of uh, merchant processing. I use Square for my mobile, and I also take Zelle. Yeah, mm. I do Zelle a lot. Mm -hmm. All right, excellent. And then um, I use Zelle. Venmo it has increased in popularity, Cash App as well. And um, I used square all the time what i i got burned pretty bad on square because they can uh, just decide that they don't like your business model and and seize your funds and stuff technically i guess any credit card processors can do that but they did it to me and i didn't like it uh so i switched uh to stripe and the other methods of payment as well and if you put a um if you use something different that you just love using it makes payments really easy um, post that into the chat so Sue can see those responses as well. Sue, how was that? Great. Awesome. Thanks for being here. Thanks for sparking a great question and conversation. All right. Uh, let's see. We already got Emery. John Gorish, it has been so long. Thanks for being here. What state are you in and how can we help? Yes, I'm in uh, Texas. Uh, I have an unusual question. Um, the name of my business is alwaysaccuratenotary.com. So my email address is john, J-O-N, john at alwaysaccuratenotary.com. Someone commented, that's 
too many letters. That, that's complicated, could be typos, et cetera. So it was suggested that I do bookjohngorosh.com. Now, because John can be spelled with an H, I don't have an H in it. I got both domain names, bookjohngorosh.com. But someone said, well, that may affect your SEO. So I just didn't know how common uh, it is to have an email address that's not directly linked by name to the website. Well, the great question. Yeah. So it's actually pretty common. Uh, I have one. Yeah. You you have one, Laura? Well, yeah. My email address is bwordsbcglobal.net, but my website is at your service mobile notary. Yeah. And uh, I've seen, uh, th I think it's way more common than we uh, uh, realize, especially with those longer names, John. So it's probably not going to affect your SEO, I can't think of any reason that it would because your your domain and your website's going to stay the same, right? Correct. You're only going to use this for your email address. Correct. Yeah. So if there was an impact, I would say it's very minimal. It's more important to have something that people will remember. But then I'll also tell you this too, is how often are you giving out verbally your email address? If it is a lot, then this might make sense. If it's not a lot and people are just re replying to things or they're clicking send email here and things, it might not be worth it. And John, this may not be for you. This may be for other people who are thinking, oh, crap, do I have to do this too? You might, you might not need to if you're not verbally giving your email address out on a regular basis without something tangible, a digital business card or a, a, a printed did business card or something like that. Okay. I appreciate the feedback. Thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. Great question. Anything from Beth or Laura that you'd add to that? No, I'm good. I think I, I also want to say, uh, if you have, when you first started your business, if you picked a domain name that you now regret, it's really easy to buy a new domain and just forward that to your current website. So in, let's just use John's example right now. If he picked um, always accurate mobile notary, Kansas City, Missouri.com, and he's like, oh my gosh, that was a terrible decision, but I don't want to rebuild my entire website. He could literally buy bookjohn.com and point it to the other website. So then he could just start saying bookjohn.com. And it's really easy. You pay either a dollar or fifteen dollars or twenty dollars a year for your domain, and forwarding is free. Piece of cake to do that. Phil Shannon, great to see you on here. It looks like you're in California, but that's well, you got a jacket on, so I imagine you're not in Hawaii right now. Phil, you want to unmute and talk to us? Uh oh, it looks, it looks like it's that iPhone. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'll come back to you, Phil. Michelle James is here, though. She's ready. Uh, Michelle, tell us what state you're in and how we can help. Hi there, everybody. I'm from Florida. And um, this might be for Laura, actually, because I did do her attorney um, course, what she mm -hmm. had. Um, I saw a financial advisor today, and I was talking to them about doing the. Um, family planning um, notary paperwork. And he said that he's gonna to speak to one of his attorneys for me. And he said, what is your fees? How much do you charge? And I was like, <laughs> I wasn't expecting that question. So, yeah. I, but I did say to him that it's gonna be dependent on how far. So it's gonna be like per mileage, where they are, whatnot, whatnot. So I kind of got around it that way. But um, my question is, how do you work out the packages and how much to charge? And I know it's going to be different from state to state and person to person, but I just kind of wanted an idea so that I know what I'm what I might be working with. Because I know that there's different different packages and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah, definitely. I think this is a great question. And we'll let Laura take it over because there is a I difference between just important. basic a estate planning appointments, right? That might be one to three documents versus doing an entire 
uh, living trust presentation. So with that bundle package feel. So Laura, I'd love for you to um, talk a little bit about what how, what the pricing strategy is for these bundled living trust presentations versus regular standard estate planning docs. So it starts with information. You need to know. It's really hard to quote something when you don't know what they want because then you don't want, know what services are going to be required uh, and uh, so that you can stack, uh, oh, you want these two things, the three things. Um, so that's the first thing is, uh, one, do you have a standard fee for your travel? Do you have a standard fee set up for your notarization? Do you have a standard fee for printing? So do you have just have those fees so that you know in the top of your head what they are? And then based on the information, which is how many documents, how far do I have to drive, right? Does it fit within the range that I have for travel set? It's gonna be that. And if it's just a few documents, it's plus however many signers times the documents times $10, let's say $10 in Florida. Um, so it's a travel plus any other services you might have to provide. Um, and that's how I quote it when uh, it's not a package because I'm not going to quote $150 if it turns out to be three documents, right? right. I'm, I'm not, that's not uh, reasonable. Now, when they say, oh, it's going to be a full trust. When I hear full trust, now I know that I'm going to be presenting documents. I might be collecting signatures besides what's notarized. I may have to uh, do follow-up work such as scanning signature pages or certificates and or mailing off the county, uh, the uh, deed to the county recorder for them. So depending on what the arrangement is I have with the attorney on what you know, my part, my contribution is going to be, um, I'm also going to be a witness. So I start looking at all those things and I say, okay, I can do this and this and this and this and this and this and this. All of that I will do for X amount of dollars. Let's say that's $175. Uh, one person, and it might be, you know, for two people, it's going to be more. Uh, so it's, you need to start out with knowing what do you charge for those different components that uh, you have, um, and then you integrate that with, is this a few documents? I'm going this model, which is travel plus whatever, my notarization plus whatever other services I'm asked for if I'm asked to print them. If I see that it's going to be a package deal, then I'm not so worried about how many notarizations it is. I know that it's probably gonna take me about an hour of my time. So what's an hour of my time, right? Uh, what do I need to get paid for me to feel comfortable with that and cover all of my direct costs so that I can then allocate out how much is gonna be a profit, how much am I gonna get paid and how much is gonna pay for the expenses. Okay. Does so that help you with a strategy? Well, yes and no. So, but I do appreciate that information. Well, what's the no? What are you, if you're looking for spe specific numbers, I really no, can't what give I was, you them. What I was going to ask you was that, so if you was in a similar situation, if, so I was with one professional and I said, oh, I can do this and this. And then they said that they're going to introduce me to one of their attorneys. Um, how much do you charge? And what is your fees? How so I wouldn't go, I, I would not go down that road to the conversation of fees. That's not where I start. I don't lead with what my fees are. I would say, you know, I'd really love to talk about, you know, how I can contribute and, and um, bring value to this client of yours. And once I have an idea of how I can do that for them, then I would be able to help you understand how my fees are put together. But I, I would try to deter that conversation to go a different path rather than quoting fees because you don't have enough information to do it no yeah. that's that's right and i did i mean i did actually say to him that it it depends it, there's variables that's involved so what he said he will do is he's going to speak to one of his colleagues his attorney friend um to see if it's something that they may be interested in and then he was basically asking me do i have a um a sheet of all the different services that services. i provide that I could then um, send on to them. So that's why I kind of wanted some ideas like, well, right. if it was if it was one 
um, one sheet, then it was this amount. If it was a package, then it's going to be that amount, you know? So uh, I have some feedback on this too, Michelle, because, uh, and I love what Laura is saying, because uh, you'll learn as you start doing more and more of these um, full living trust presentations that a lot of times every attorney or every law firm, or and then every attorney at that law firm, or even the paralegals have their own way of doing things. They don't have their own preferences. So uh, what happens here, the psychology behind that is that professional who is going to make the introduction for you is thinking from his own wallet. Maybe he's price conscious, so he's just assuming that everybody is. So a lot of times what they're asking when they ask about price, they're just that's the most comfortable answer they know because that's all they know about the situation is how much is it going to cost. And it's up to us as the professional to take that gentle control. It's not about cost. It's about value and solving a problem. And so when you take back control of that, and just as Laura suggested, you say, you know what, I can tailor my services. So it's going to depend on the, how the attorney likes things done. It's my service level. I would love an introduction on that. And I'd sit down with them and uh, make sure I can bring maximum value to his law firm. That would be one of those ways how that, and you handled it perfectly, just because it will depend on so many factors. You just want to get the introduction so you can bring value and show them what you're capable of and tailor that pricing. And I'll just throw this out there right now too, is these are elevated conversations when you're right. talking about those uh, professionals, the triangle of trust that they, the attorneys, the uh, financial advisors and the tax professionals on there. And then to have those conversations, you got to elevate yourself. You got to make it not a triangle of trust, but a, a cube of trust, right? The square of trust. You got to be that fourth peg in there and have that level of conversations. And just yesterday, we invited Sean Callagy, um, a trial attorney. He's an inspirational speaker, but he uh, delivered a training yesterday where he gave some examples of this, Michelle. He did some role play about how you take over the conversation. You don't make it about time. You don't make it about money. You make it about value. You kind of flip the script and you go deeper on that. And there's a replay that you can do that. It's notarycoach.com forward slash standout. I'll type that into the chat here with you as well. But if you want to elevate these conversations, this is just the start of a series of conversations in that community as we bring uh, attorneys into our world and we start showing them what we can do. We've got this entire industry uh, professional notaries that are eager to serve and they're well trained and well versed on how to do this work. So we're merging those two ecosystems here. And that replays for you there in the chat. So Michelle, was that helpful at all? Yes, it was. I mean, what Laura said was helpful, but um both of you combined, it's kind of straightened things out a bit more for me. So thank you very much. You got it. Great question. I'd love to hear that. Beth, would you add anything to that part of the conversation? Oh, geez, Bill, you want me to follow that? <laughs> I think you guys just really covered the waterfront on that. Laura on the technical and, and Bill on the general control of your conversation in that space. And you just want to make sure uh, if you get into that dollar situation that you, like Bill says, just guide it through. And like Laura says, Let's sit down and let's discover what my what I can do for you and what your needs are. And then we can come up with the dollars. Excellent. And the other thing I wanted to reiterate on what Laura was talking about too, she uh, mentioned stacking, stacking your value uh, before you quote your price. So if you answer the price call, or price price question too soon without stacking your value. They just equate what you're doing with a, a signature and a stamp. Mm. They don't see the value in it. So you need to have a full comprehensive understanding of what the scope of the work is so you can stack your value and you can let them know, I can take care of this. I can take care of this. I can take care All of right. this. This is what I understand. Here's my fee to bundle that up and I can be there at 7 p.m. as requested. Does that work for you? Mm. You got to seal the deal too, right? You right. And the, the, the funny thing was, because when I was speaking to him, I was speaking to him on, like I said, on financial planning. And um, then he was talking about the attorney and I said, oh, blah, 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 blah. And he said, oh, um, just to let you know, just for your information, that 
most attorneys, they're all notaries as well. So I said, yeah, I'm aware of that. But where I come into it is that you've got the housebound, you've got the people out of hours, people that are work. And I'm sure many of those attorneys are not gonna to wanna to be doing those type of calls. And he said to me, well, to be honest with you, I don't do those either and I don't wanna do those either. And I think that's when the light bulb started ticking. And then he said to me, I'm gonna um, introduce you to a few people. Yeah, I love that. I love that. And I love that you stuck with it too. You got to keep pulling that string a little bit sometimes. Because here's what's real. If if an attorney is charging $400 to $700 an hour, then popping out for a notary stops making sense really. And I told him that as well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then uh, most of the attorneys, especially when they're fresh out of school and they're hungry and they're out to change the world, they are here to change the world. They have a, a mission and a purpose that they've tied in or woven in to their career choice as an attorney for many of them. And if they want to have more of an impact, then they need people like you and me to do that. They can't be in two places at one time. All so right. you can literally double their impact by taking care of these living trust appointments or these uh, the quote unquote closings, these uh, sign gathering these signatures mm -hmm. and handling these notarizations. And that's important. When you tap into their purpose as well and it becomes a joint purpose together, you're working together, that's gonna be really powerful. Right. And that's what I said to him, I, I, I'm actually helping to save them time because then they can focus on the money producing activities. Exactly. And I can take care of the, the signatures for them, you know? Yeah, you got this. You got this. And here, here's what's the, the frustrating thing about relationships and the reason that so many people try to skip the relationships, right? That's why the platforms are so uh, appealing to us because we don't have to go out. We don't have to manage anything. We just get a ding on our phone and we go to those appointments and they're nice when they work, but when it slows down, then we're still, we're left here with quiet phones. It's always going to go back to relationships relationships are depend on the moods, personality, chemistry, all of those things. So sometimes you're going to find attorneys that immediately recognize your value. Yes, I want to work with you. I see it. Then the others are going to be kind of like this one, right? Where you're pulling the string. You're like, oh, wait, the, like the light bulb's just getting brighter and brighter on how you can help them. And others won't ever see it but you still have to have those conversations anyway. You have to get in the arena because we can't assume that these attorneys just know we're all out here and they're just holding us at bay. That's not the case. They don't know we're here. We assume they did, but they don't. So we've got to have these conversations. Every single one of us, tell everyone about your business. Talk to attorneys, share your value. That's how... The rising tide raises all boats, and we are those boats. Great conversation, Michelle. Thank you so much for prompting. Oh, thank you. That. Thank you all. Thank you. Yeah, you bet. Uh, and then, oh, we've got one more announcement. Uh, I promised Laura we would talk about too, because we've got that uh, job available through the National Notary Association, right? Laura, do you want to talk about that real quick? Yeah, I just want to say that the NNA is hiring an instructor, which is what I do, um, in the San Jose area of California. So if that is you live in that area and are interested in doing something like that, then reach out at the NNA. The link is in the chat. Laura, what would you say? What advice would you have to somebody sitting on today's call thinking, oh, I've always wanted to be an instructor, but who am I to be an instructor at the National Notary Association? Now, when I started, I'd only been a notary for a year and a half. And, you know, I probably didn't know very much more than most of the new notaries that come to our show today. Uh, and I think that if that's something you want to do, then do an assessment of yourself. It's really not about the notary skill. That's not what would prevent you from doing this kind of work. This kind of work is about presentation skills. This kind of work is about knowing how to um, take complicated concepts and break them down. And if those are things that you like doing, then this is a job you might want to apply for. Because they'll teach, the NNA will teach how to do the presentation, right? They'll teach you what, what you're teaching. 
Yes, just they provide the script and they'll provide the training. I think what I think there are things they cannot train. There are skills that are not trainable. Uh, so just because I can show you the slideshow and tell you, give you the script, doesn't mean your delivery, your comfort level being in front of 50 to 90 people at a time presenting live. These are things that need to be part of you. And if they are part of you, then this could be something that could be really valuable for you as a notary. Because I'm going to tell you, it, I don't know that I would have gone as far as I did without being connected to the enemy. Mm. Fabulous. Thank you for that explanation, Laura. So uh, I posted a link uh, in the chat. You can also just go to uh, just Google careers at National Notary Association and it pops right up there for you. Our last question is reserved for Patricia in California. Patricia, hello. How can we help today? Patricia, oh, just went back to mute. We could not hear you before. Let me send you that message. Looks like we might be having a technical difficulty there. Patricia, you are not muted, but I cannot hear you. If you have a second to type that into the chat, we'll do our best to answer that question today. Guys, uh, Phil Shannon, I noticed he probably had to pop out, but he's got a call happening five minutes after the end of the show. So in about six minutes, you can join Phil Shannon um, at notarycoach.com forward slash TNT or the link in the chat and scroll all the way down to the bottom. There's a direct link on Zoom so you can join that conversation as well. Beth yes. Hathit. Oh, yes, Laura. One more announcement that got missed is the NNA conference is next month and they still have workshop passes if you feel like you missed it because all the full conferences are sold. But they do have workshop passes that you can purchase to just attend the workshops. Uh, and if you're interested in that, go to the National Notary Association website. Yes. Absolutely. And uh, Laura, Jen, and myself will be presenting three different workshops and panel conversations at that event. So hopefully we'll get a chance to meet you in person there. Beth, thank you so much for your time. Any closing words or special events or announcements that you might have to close us out today? I do not have anything more that I want to add. Um, I've got a lot of people um, that kind of uh, float back and forth between Notary Stars and um, TNT. And I really appreciate that um, Bill and Laura share the crowd. I think that's awesome. It's totally our pleasure. There's plenty for everyone, especially those that are so committed uh, to the notary community and helping raise the bar and help people, Beth. And that is definitely you. I know it's Ronnie at uh, Notary Stars and the whole team over there. So it's a pleasure to have you here. Laura, any closing words from you today? She's saying bye. She's got to get back to teaching. I'll say goodbye as well. Thank you for growing yourself and your business on a Tuesday afternoon. You'll see Laura and Beth next week. I'm taking vacation. We'll see you later. Bye-bye. <laughs> bye, guys.